Hey everybody, my name is Lee Fraser. I'm a technical specialist for Autodesk specializing in Maya and we're going to take a look today at how we can use MASH networks to affect each other. At the same time we're going to affect some outlines that are generated by the PaintFX Tune tool and hopefully we'll use these in a little bit different way than you're used to using and create an effect similar to what you see here. We'll start off our logo build or our effect build with something super simple. I'm just going to take a cube and create a mesh network and that's going to be the basis for the traveling thing that I'm going to use to reveal the logo and that's basically going to be used as a, as a visibility uh, fall off object that we can control with just simple keyframes. So I'll, I'll select my, my cube. Let's go into the mesh network options and create a mesh network. This is just sort of a standard bit. I'm going to center the distribution and then I'm going to go to my mash waiter and use a signal node uh, just to create that sort of scattery, electric, vibrate kind of uh, kind of bit. I'm going to use curl noise. This is a new one that we added, a new type of noise that we added in 2017. And I've just, for expedience sake, I'm going to use a preset that you just kind of off screen that you can't see and this is going to drive that effect and you can see what happens here. So just to kind of look at this in real time you can kind of see a little bit better. It's not quite so crazy uh, as it was before and let's hide that other cube. I don't need that one. Let's go ahead and do a couple of things. I actually want to increase the number of points that go into my effect. That looks a little bit better and I'm probably going to dial back the distance maybe bump up the Y value get to a little more variation and let's add that'll work for me. I like that. So to make this look a little more interesting, it looks kind of cool as it is, but what I want to do is create a tune outline for it. And that tune outline, uh, and just as a side note, someone someone asked on YouTube how I get this the shadows in the background. It's just a use background shader on the geometry. Uh, Viewport 2.0 supports that use background shader, so once you assign it, it shows the background and lets me cast shadows on it. What I want to do with my cubes though is to create that sort of electric effect is use a tune outline. So I'm going to go to my rendering menus under the tune menu just assign a new tune outline. And just like that I get a pretty cool outline. Let's actually select the geometry and hide that. And you can see that right away that's actually a pretty neat effect on its own. Uh, you can do some really cool things with that. So you get this 3D, 2D sort of uh, hybrid between the two and but I don't want this this is not what I want for this effect I want to dial this back a little bit so what I'm going to do is select the the tune outline and go look at some of the options here the first thing I want are crease lines I want I, I don't want crease lines rather so I'm going to deselect that and select my intersection lines and go down to my profile line width and dial that back and dial back my border line width so when I deselected the crease lines, I get rid of those. So now all I have are intersection lines. The problem is I don't have anything to intersect with. Let's first off change this intersection color so we get something that looks nice. And then I'm going to turn on my logo. So we'll just show that in the background or show that in the screen. And to get this to work, all I have to do is take that same tune outline and assign it to my geometry. Just like that, you can see my intersection lines sort of pop up and reveal themselves. I'll go ahead and hide the logo again. And now let's do this. Let's take my mesh node just so we can control this and add a transform tool. The transform node just lets me move this around and you can see I get as I move this across the logo I get that exact reveal. So let's maybe set a couple of keyframes really quickly. Uh, we'll set a keyframe here and maybe frame 110. Let's move this across and find a point where it disappears. You can see it outlining the geometry, which I love. I think that's the that's really cool, and that's what I, really what I wanted out of this effect. So there we go. As it travels across, you get that sort of scattery, jittery bit. I really like that. And so now we need something for it to reveal around. And so that's where uh, my curves come in. All the type node. All you have to do inside the type node inside of Maya is go to the geometry section, create curves from type, and you get something that looks like this. Nothing too surprising. So what I want to do is use a curve node to pass some other geometry down this, uh, these curves, and that's super simple to do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up this other piece of geometry 
will create another mesh network. And let's uh, go into the distribution section. Uh, the first thing we want to do, well, let's, let's actually do it in the other direction. Let's select all my curves, select my mesh network. We'll go to the waiter. And with those curves selected, when I add a curve node, automatically that generates the connection. The only thing I need to do is make sure that that distribution is turned down to 20 because it's still using that offset. And you can see that dials it right back to those curves. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of options in here. We want these to basically surround the curve itself. So I mean, I don't want these animated, so we'll turn off the animation. I'll bump up the step, and I know this needs to be about 10, so I'll bump that up. Uh, we'll set equal spacing on the uh, option there. Everything else is pretty straightforward. The only thing I need are more points to travel around the curve. So let's increase this, and you can see I know that 1,000 is a little bit light, ultimately because I want I think that's a little bit thick so let's take that initial cube and dial it back just a little bit we can scale it but at some point we wind up losing um, a little bit of the reveal effect because it pops on a little bit too much I'll probably cheat just a little bit here and we'll extend that guy out and eh, that looks pretty good I'll live with that for right now and the last thing we need is something to turn it on and off so I'll take my uh, visibility node and add that in here and create a fall off object and this allows me to select where I'm going to reveal the effect itself so you can see as I move this across the surface or if I scale it or do anything to it that's going to turn on and off all of the points on my logo so now all I need to do is drive it with that initial effect that we created so if we select the visibility fall off shape, notice that, uh, let's actually increase this fall off zone. We'll make a couple of options here. I do want this add to be turned on. This is what's gonna allow it to stay in the viewport once I start playing, playing the scene back. So now all I need to do is go down to the connections. This shape in is all I need. So let's take and grab my repro mesh from the first example. We'll drag that guy in there. And remember, it's already animated. So as soon as I hit play, this is going to reveal itself. The last thing I need to do just for the viewport here is to change the playback speed to every frame so it knows where to leave that behind. And just like that, we get a really cool logo reveal. Now you notice I got have a couple of stutters here. That's because nothing really came into contact with that lower section. So all I have to do is grab my transform locator and watch what happens here. If I go, let's try to find those frames where it's it missed. All I have to do is scale that guy up. Maybe scale it taller. I could move it since I'm only transforming the X direction. Let's try to find that value there. Eh, I still missed one. Let's try one more time. But it builds really nicely, and you can see we, we could always fudge with that just a little bit. But it builds really nicely across uh, the surface, and we get a nice logo reveal with a little bit of an electric effect. Now, there's one thing that I probably would change here. So you can see that I do get the outline of the text itself, and that's pretty cool. But if I wanted to add just a touch more detail or I'd use a little bit more of this effect on the outside of the logo, I could turn on self intersect. And just like that, I have a little bit more of an effect north and south. And that guy obviously gives you a little bit more of a, a concentrated result or concentrated effect around the logo. And then outside of that, it continues to, uh, to generate that, that sort of electro effect. Uh, maybe it's a Tron effect. Maybe that's a better uh, way of looking at it. So that's a way of taking the tune outline and generating a cool effect that's driven from MASH and also uses one MASH network to affect another MASH network. So hopefully you guys can find some uses for this. Remember the tune outline does a lot of really cool things. You can generate geometry from this and assign a shader to it. You can get some really cool glow effects. Maybe I'll do that in another video. Uh, and you can also generate curves from it and those curves can be used to drive other MASH networks as well. So again, thanks for watching and let me know what you think. Thanks a lot.